Hello and welcome back. Um, today we've got a, a video looking at another uh, model that I've now finished designing and that's this tiny tiny little uh, model of a G-series uh, simplex locomotive. Um, there's been a few videos um, on the channel um, about this particular model. Um, it's been quite a while since I did anything with it. Um, there's a bit of a story which I will which I'll tell first. Um, so I'd got a previous ver a previous print of this. Um, I'll give you a bit of a view while we talk. Um, I got a previous uh, print of this, all ready to go, ready just to paint. Um, and then I had two problems. Firstly, if you remember, it runs on a um, the bogey that comes out of one of the Kato uh, Portram or Centram chassis. And these bogies are tiny um, and they require you to um, do some electrical work to them to uh, fit a resistor if there's no space for the control board etc um, and um, I've got everything already I've got parts all laid out on my desk on this on this map um, <clears throat> and that was on a, a Friday afternoon and uh, the cutting mat lives in my study at home uh, which is where I often work during the day um, but over the weekend I very rarely come in here because I'm doing family stuff um, so when I came back in on Monday morning I discovered that the body uh, print was on the floor and there was no sign of the power chassis um, a lot of hunting around um, I had before I'd spotted that it was missing I'd emptied the bin that lives in the door doorway so bin bag was retrieved from the outside rubbish bin and sorted through to make sure I hadn't accidentally thrown it away because while I do have some spare chassis they're not cheap um, and nobody else would admit to having been in my study over the weekend so I had no idea where it's gone I don't have a cat that could have easily jumped up or nodged off um, and we didn't think anything else but the bin had been taken out of the study over the weekend um, and it took over a week before the bogey eventually turned up um, it had got knocked off into another bag that somebody had taken on my study now i don't think it was me um uh, it could have been um anyway bogey was found um but that was like a week of looking and by which point i kind of got kind of fed up with the whole looking for it and slightly disheartened um so i moved on and, and we, we did the whole finishing off of um converting uh scaloe into talilin and then starting on the, the conversion of reneus into dolgok um but while well, trying to do some research for the, the Dolgot build, um, I decided I'd, I'd try and finish this off first. Um, which brings us uh, to the next disaster, which was painting. So this is the print that I actually had on my desk uh, ready to finish off. Um, and as you can see, I've tried to paint it yellow and it's just... <sighs> so... This was painted with the uh, Vahello um, Model Air Yellow. Um, now, to be fair, I've had that paint for a while because I probably bought it when I did the first um, prototype print uh, model of the Clayton uh, Battery Electric Loco in 014. Um, but it still it seemed to come out of the, the bottle into my airbrush okay, uh, but it would not spray. It would spray for like the first like five, ten seconds. And then it would just stop spraying. I wouldn't get anything out of the brush. And you could, if you looked at the end of the brush, it had just kind of, um, where the needle comes through the end, it just kind of clotted and clogged all, all to completely solid. So you'd, you'd, you'd pull the needle in and you'd end up with just a, a flap of, uh, of paint flapping around, of, of dried paint flapping around and nothing really coming out. Um, so all in all, I spent about an hour cleaning the brush, thinning the paint, trying it again. And it was just, an absolute um, disaster so I'm guessing the the paints probably off because I didn't have that kind of problem when I sprayed either or um, tell it in recently so I'm guessing it's just the yellow paint um, but yeah I was really kind of frustrated at this point because obviously I'd, I'd, I primed it um, and then tried uh, and the primer was fine uh, and then the paint was just and, and obviously something this size in 3d print you can't really I can't rub it down to deal with all these splatters and things so nice thing about it being a 3d print printed on at my home printer I can just print more so I printed another one um, this one I painted differently um, so it's painted in um, 
Army War Paints Demonic Yellow. Now, the reason I chose this was because after the disaster of trying to airbrush paint it, I decided I wanted um, to see if I could find an aerosol can. Now, I've used Humbrol Yellow, I think, in the past, and Humbrol Orange um, without any problems. They're acrylic um, paints without any, any problems. But as I think I've mentioned in a video before, I, I can't seem to find like most of the colours in aerosol cans now. They just they don't even seem to be listed on whole bronze web website. So anyway, I went for a search and I came across this, which looked like roughly the right colour that I wanted. And more importantly, not only is it available in the dropper bottle, um, but it's available in a uh, aerosol as a primer. Um, so you can see, demonic yellow colour primer. So um, my hope was that this would go on. Um, nice and easily and give a really nice coat if I needed to um, paint anything or touch anything up I could use the dropper bottle and I could probably thin this and airbrush it if I really needed a, a different top coat um, and the um, the bottle claims it's 100% uh, colour match to the primer um, and my experience suggests that's definitely so um, so this was <clears throat> I didn't bother giving it a primer coat given that the this reckons it is a primer this the aerosol can um, so this was just the black print um, painted with the yellow the yellow primer um, and then um, I did what I said I would do previously which was to um, essentially flood the panels with black uh, and then I dry brushed the yellow paint from the dropper bottle over the wire um, to get that to stand out. I decided I didn't need to because this is quite thick because it's not designed for airbrushing It's quite thick and goes on quite nicely. I didn't need to um, Brush it with ivory or anything first like I dis like I discussed previously um, So that seems to have worked um, Really nicely on all the panels some of them are a bit more yellow than others, but that's okay wear and tear um, It's fine. Um, I also used it. I also then painted like the if I try to figure out um, I painted the floor, um, tried to pick some of the safety grip um, out, painted the seat uh, black so it just stands out as a bit different. Um, <clears throat> inside of the cab was obviously a bit hard to get the spray paint in so where I needed to it mostly covered uh, but I have been in with the brush uh, and the yellow um, to kind of touch some of that up. Um, but the, the the kind of the fact that the yellow's gone on over black just means it looks a bit kind of dirty and shadowy, and that that's okay. Um, I ended up while trying to dry brush this panel, scratching the top coat here on this side of the roof, um, and I just painted it back with this, and you'd never know. Um, it's a it's a perfect match, so that's really good. Uh, and then it's been just gently weathered. There was a, a little bit of um, basically just this Humbrol uh, dark earth weathering powder. Um, just to take the the kind of um, the the the, t the sheen off the yellow, so it's not quite so so one color makes it you look a bit used. I don't want it to look um, completely uh, brand new, but I don't want it to look completely rusted to pieces either. Um, so yeah, so um, so yeah, so I'm really happy with this, and um, I'll put a video up as we're talking. Um, it will shuttle backwards and forwards across the test track quite nicely. Um, I did have a slight problem um, with weight so what I found was that if I just had the print and the bogey and fitted the driver figure um, who sits quite nicely in the seat um, he may have a, he may even fit a cabbed version he, he just about fits in between the front and back of the well the two sides essentially of the of the cab so he might be a perfect one if I want to do a cabbed version which spoiler alert I do but I haven't got to yet um, he may fit in a, in a in a cabbed version as well um, it didn't drive very well it was very would it would go backwards not too badly but it wouldn't go forwards very well and I decided that if you look at where the driver's figure is sitting he's sitting while he's sitting over this wheel he's also kind of slightly um, to the outside of this wheel and I think it was causing the whole model to essentially rotate slightly around that rear wheel uh, which is causing all sorts of issues, especially on my <coughs> test track, which isn't um, which is hand hand built um, dual gauge nine mil and fourteen, um, and isn't the most accurate of hand built track. Um, so it was kind of causing it to twist and things as well. Um, so what I've actually done is I've added a little bit of weight in the top of here, and what, what I've done is I've taken one of the the most recent um, 
Centran models I took apart had some weights in it. I don't, I don't remember seeing them in previous models. It could just be that I'd not um, not stripped them down far enough. But um, this is the all the bits you get left over when you strip a, <laughs> strip a Centran and don't keep everything keep everything but the body. Um, but yeah, it contains these tiny little um, turned brass uh, weights, and there's one over in the roof, I think, of, over each bogey. Um, and again, I guess that's to give a little bit more traction. Um, so I've super glued that in the top of here. It's out of the way of the of the bogey and the wiring and things, um, and it just it just keeps it a bit more balanced. Um, but it shuttles up and down the track uh, quite nicely, um, and I think it looks the part. Um, as I say, we I, I picked this because um, I had drawings. There's a number of books it appears in. The one I was using was this Motorrail Catalogues book by Alan Keith. Um, there is a page that has, uh, if I can get it under the camera, there we go, um, that has the drawings of the, the loco. Um, it has the cab just as a kind of outline um, because obviously that was a kind of optional extra. So I've built it um, without the cab. Um, although the only um, locos that were used in this country, the G scale ones, were these uh, were built with a cab. Um, as you can see here, that's one of the ones from the from the UK. Um, but I don't think I've done. I don't think I've done too badly. Um, I didn't fit. I didn't do the hole in the front panel, the circular hole that was originally meant to hold a light on the model in the, in the look in the footing. You can see, obviously, the light's been moved, but the hole's been left. Uh, this one's now preserved, I think, and the hole's been plated over. But I decided if I wasn't fitting a light, I didn't need a hole, um, so I haven't done that. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's been a, an interesting journey. As I said, there's a if you've not seen the build series uh, so far, uh, feel free to go back and have a look. There's lots of discussion of issues with the 3D printing, um, but in the end, I've ended up with a print that prints. I can support it while it's printing. Uh, the mesh works and looks looks good even though I couldn't get any metal mesh that was that fine. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. In retrospect, uh, the front's not too bad, but the back, I should probably have cleaned up the print. It seems to have a line that I'd not noticed before I painted it um, that I need to, could probably have cleaned up the, the print. But yeah, the point is I can go back and I can build as many of these as I like now. Um, I have the print file and um, yeah, so I can print these off and, and, and build them. Um, which does mean, of course, that if anybody watching this uh, wants one of their own, um, I'll leave a link in the video description um, to the contact form I use. Um, drop me a line, uh, drop me a message, and um, we can, I can work out sorting a printout for you. Um, obviously, you'd have to source the the, the Centram Portram bogey for yourself and, and do all the fixing and things to it, uh, but that's that's not too difficult. There's a number of other models that use the same. The same chassis, so people working in online are kind of used to used to using uh, that chassis. Uh, something else I did on this chassis, let me to drive out so I don't drop him. Um, to try and hide it somewhat is I've gone back in and I've used again this uh, black 2.0 uh, paint from Stuart Semple. It's supposed to be like the blackest of black paint. He's actually now onto black 4.0. I just released a, a new version, but this bottle is going to last me forever. Um, I've used like almost nothing of it. Um, but it's 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 a really flat matte back paint as you can tell the axle boxes were painted black and then just ever so slightly dry brushed grey to highlight the details and then I've had a um, tester's dull coat over the top just to protect and take the sheen off slightly but the the side here of the of the chassis has been painted just with the the black 2.0 you can't varnish over the top of it because that ruins the effect but you can see just how how black it is compared to uh, the black paint of the wheels. Um, the only problem with it is on the plastic it doesn't seem to hold very well so you can see I painted the whole of the bottom but it's already rubbing off a bit in places but it's easy enough to touch up if I need to and as long as I'm not picking it up all the time it's not too bad but you can the, the effect is quite is quite stunning especially when it's you know it's on a track um, so there's nothing underneath it and there's, there's more shadow play um, it kind of disappears almost entirely um, you can see obviously the silvery wheels but the the black body disappears really really well um <clears throat> so yeah so i mean from the point of view of previous models and what have i learned this time um the mesh um was the main thing i think this time was that you know i can do modeled mesh by essentially doing the mesh um at this scale at least 
with the very very thin wires as a kind of indent into a solid piece so that there's quite a thick wall behind this so that it doesn't warp um, but it works quite well and the effect is the effect is fine certainly at standard viewing distance for, for models like this it's uh, it's fine um, so yeah so that works quite nicely but it's again it's um, it continues my my theme I suppose of building ridiculously tiny little models so um, you've just to, just as a comparison I think this is now the smallest working loco model I've built um, oh certainly the smallest I've designed and I can't think of anything smaller that I've built either um, or have to build um, I mean if you think about the size of the sh powered chassis you can imagine they're not you know nothing you build on top of it's going to be big but anything with a purpose-built chassis is probably going to be uh, bigger than this uh, but just as compa as a comparison we have the other two two of the small um, models that I've designed so this was obviously the Hudson Hunslet um, there's lots of video there's a video on the channel about the design process for this one uh, this is my first um, locomotive kit and it has a um, custom design 3d printed brass chassis um, to get everything to fit in the space there's a, a motor two pulleys a rubber band lay shaft um, and at the time I thought this was tiny I thought this was the you know the smallest I could possibly get and to be fair it probably is the smallest I can get if I'm building my own chassis there's no way I could build the chassis to the the, the style and, and size of the of the of the Portram and Centram bogey um, but then I did the I did the um, Alan Keith K K12, um, which did use the the Centram bogey. It's not fitting very well. The last time I had it out, I found that one of the wires had uh, broken loose. My terrible soldering, so um, I haven't. It's not all nicely tacked back in. Uh, I need to go in and, and fix that. But um, but yeah, this was the <clears throat> this was the other local kit I built. Uh, I designed. So this is all um, the foot plate is printed and then everything above the foot plate is um is etched uh, nickel silver um <clears throat> and that was that was really good um as you can you can kind of just about see there is there is there is mesh in here uh, that's actual mesh this time um painted it looks pretty much the same as it does on the other one because you can't there's, there's no light shining through because of everything that's inside um so yeah so um but the but in, in comparison you know if we do a shot kind of from the top um, you can see that the the G series simplex is uh, approximately the same height, um, but is is um, is much much shorter. Um, I'll pull them down a bit so you can get a bit of a slightly better view. Um, if we line them up, kind of buffer to buffer, as it were, um, so they're all roughly in the same place. Um, you can see that the 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 Keith and the Hudson Hunslet are roughly the same length. Uh, but the G series is is tiny. Um, I think it's also uh, it's about the same width as the Keith, which makes sense because they're basically both just wide enough to fit the, the Partram chassis. Um, the Keith's actually slightly wider at the back um, because it, it, the 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 cab is is wider. Oh well, actually, no, the foot plate's the same width all around, isn't it? So yeah, so it's about the same width as the. They'll be pretty much identical width. Um, and then the Hudson Hunslet again is is it's not far off the same width, um, which is obviously they're all designed for running on nine millimeter gauge track, um, and basically there's not much outside the outside the wheels. Um, so you've got the yeah wheels and then the frame, and that's the, basically the the same on on this one. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> it's been a it's been a fun build, um, something entirely different given that these have all been. Um, a combination of print and um, photo etched metal parts um, <clears throat> and this one I didn't I just did the whole thing um, 3d printed um, <clears throat> I think in, in, in some respects uh, it's made life harder in others it's made life easier so for instance this back section um, now it's printed and, and, and cured it's, it's reasonably strong but it, it's very very thin printing um, and that could have been done as a, an etched metal piece, but it would have been tricky to kind of fold and get right. Uh, the roof of this obviously would have been easy to do as an etch, but doing things like the side panel, you know, unless you're etching the the 
mesh into the side panel trying to add metal mesh to the back and, and all that kind of thing would be a bit of a pain um and yeah there's, there's just there's no there's no space to hide seams or anything on something this this tiny so i think for once the the idea of um just doing 3d printing has worked has worked okay as i say as i've said in previous videos i'm not a fan of completely 3d printed things usually um i think using metal to represent metal especially when you've got thin sheets and, and edgy obviously exposed edges um so like on the hunslet you've got these edges around the cab um the only way to do that really is with is with metal you can't print something that thin uh, and expect it to survive um so I, i'm kind of slightly surprised uh, i guess uh, in that um that this has come out as well as it had um you know Will I be printing <clears throat> complete models in the future? I don't know. I think I'll probably try and still stick with the whole um, combination of print and um, an etch. But for some things, it, it obviously it obviously works if you spend the time and the the effort to get it right. Um, so as I say, I I do think I will do a, a cabbed version at some point. Um, that may be a metal um, addition essentially because if you've got the front of the cab here wall here side and rear piece that replaces this now i probably could 3d print it but i'm not sure i'd have, probably have to print it separately because of the way i'm uh, i'd have to support things um so and again you've got the door frame edges and things that are quite thin um so i'd have to think about how i was going to uh print that and keep it looking like thin sheet metal rather than thick metal edges um i've got away with it on this one to a certain extent because it has enough of a thick surround on the prototype and then a sheet across the back that I, it will hold um, and support and, and looks okay. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily um, get away with it on a, on a cab doorway. Anyway, um, yeah, that's 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 it for this one. Um, as I say, if, when, if and when I do get around to a cab version, there'll be a, I'm sure there'll be another video. Uh, but for now, that brings the the build of the of the G series simplex. Um, to an end um it's been a it's been a fun process and as i say if you want one of your own uh there's a link to the contact form in the description um and i can um i can organize you uh, a print uh, and you can just source the chassis yourself there's not much else to there's no other parts to source on this one so it's nice and nice and straightforward all right thanks for watching